Hello everyone, it's Stephanie here. So I'm going to do like a, a makeup demonstration, makeup lesson, whatever you want to call it. Um, for all of you that don't know me, my name is Stephanie. I am a pro makeup artist and a licensed esthetician. I have a salon with a boutique here in Las Vegas called Into the Looking Glass. That's the letter in the number two. Um, on West Charleston and Rancho, that's 20, 2202 West Charleston. Um, suite 14 and the zip is 89102 phone number 702-275-3246 um <laughs> to stop and think anyway as you can see this is all um unfiltered all of that i want you to see everything i am stripped down bare face and as you can see i have skin issues i am a senior citizen would never think I would have skin issues at my age, but I do. I'm highly, highly sensitive. Um, it comes and goes depending on the stress and all of that. So um, I have bad rosacea through here. A couple of little breakouts, but basically rosacea through here and through here too. Um, so I take care of it. I did eat some spicy food, so that caused me to, um, to break out a little bit and stuff like that. So um, this is... Very, very basic. So I know a lot of you out there do your makeup, but there's been a lot of girls out there asking about, well, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? As we get older, and I'm gearing this more toward um, the girls that are over 50, 60 range, um, because that's where I'm at. Um, because when you're um, under 35, everyone's beautiful. <laughs> but anyway... Um, I, I want you to um, be positive and I want you to have a wonderful outlook on yourself and I want you the way you feel on the inside all girly and all beautiful I want you to have that on the outside too um, makeup is just a little part of it all um, but when you're as they say in beauty school um, when you have your hair fixed and your makeup on, um, even if you feel like crap, you feel a lot better. And I do find that to be true. So I'm going to go through some of my products that I'm using and um, the different steps and all of that. I have washed my face. I've toned my face. Um, so let's talk a little bit about skincare right now. Um, skincare is extremely important at any range. You need to cleanse, you need to tone, and you need to moisturize. Um, let's talk about... Um, lines and wrinkles girls it's always going to be there unless you have surgery to get rid of it and even then it's going to be there but just a naked eye can't see it because that's part of the aging process so the most important thing in your beauty regimen in um wanting to stay youthful and everything is make sure you use sunscreen or sunblock the difference between a block and a screen is a block totally blocks everything and that filters out like the sun everything um, think of a, a wooden or a metal door a screen is just more of a filter like a screen door you still get all those rays coming in um, but it filters it a little bit but not as much as what a block would and SPF just means um, how long you can stay out in the sun before you start to turn red my advice is don't use any more than a 34 SPF and a shirt doctor your dermatologist tells you otherwise. Um, I did fight skin cancer a few years ago. Um, well, more than a few, about a little over 20 years ago. And it was a nightmare. And even though they can do it with lasers and stuff now, it's still, it's a nightmare to go through. So you don't want to do that. I had melanoma and it's not fun at all. Um, as we get older, our eyes get a little more sunken or um, we get like... Um, little bags, hoods over our eyes, um, everyone gets that. So I have deep set eyes naturally, and when I don't get sleep, they get really, really super, um, super deep. Um, so highlighting is extremely important in our makeup. But as far as skincare goes, um, if the more natural you can go, the better, the simpler, the better. I have some great um, product lines out there. You just kind of got to work and see what's um, right for you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, dry and oily and combination skin. I have very combination skin for I'm oily in some areas, very dry in other areas. Um, I also, um, I never had acne until I got older and then I got it extremely bad and then I did some treatments to get rid of it. I do think that helped 
kind of caused the rosacea because of the laser treatments that I did. Um, I don't have a beard um, or anything like that. I did electrolysis and laser a long time ago, had a breast augmentation. Um, so everyone's on, I mean, I look at us all human. It doesn't matter if you have breasts, if you live full time as a female, or if you don't, we're all human. Um, although everyone in their transition is on different um, plateaus. I don't want to say levels, but they're just at different places. And um, some things are more important than other things. Just because you don't um, transition surgically, either with breast augmentation or the whole thing, don't look at it as being less feminine. Um, make yourself happy. You know what you want. So that's enough talking about the whole transition thing because we're here about makeup. But a lot of people ask me about all of that. Um, so with the skincare, um, you, you want to look like on the labels. And usually what is listed first is what's the most in the product. So like if water's listed first, it's water. Um, you want the first three ingredients really um, to be good stuff. So if it advertises it as aloe in it, which aloe is a very calming, calming um, for skin and stuff, it can also help with wounds and all of that. Um, you want aloe to be the first, second, third, even the fourth or fifth, not the 10th or 12th or any of that. Um, and they can advertise it with aloe in it because it has aloe in it, even if it's the last ingredient, meaning there's hardly any aloe in it. Um, so that's just some information out there for you. Um, also, make sure you clean your skin every night. You pull your makeup off. I know you like you come to Vegas and you like to go out and you like to party and everything, and then you fall asleep with your makeup on. That's not good. It also can age you. Your pillow is your worst enemy. Um, you need to buy like anywhere from seven to 14 pillows, depending, I mean, um, pillowcases, depending on how many um, pillows you have on your bed and how many you sleep with. Um, because if you don't wash your face, all of that stuff gets ground in to the pillowcase and to your sheets. So you need to wash your sheets and your pillowcases every day. And I know that's not feasible for some people. So you put them aside and do your laundry like you usually do, but put fresh ones on before you go to bed. Also, if you sleep on one side, you're going to have more of a line. Um, like I have some major lines over here, all of that. But, you know, I'm a senior citizen. I also had some teeth in the back moved um, removed um, because implants were just so expensive and it's caused my face to go a little more like that. Also, I haven't been on hormones in many, many years. Um, all I felt like they did for me was bloat me, um, make me fat, make me moody and all of that. And I don't like feeling that way. Um, everyone's on, you know, looks at that at a different way. Um, doing hormones does not make you any more or less feminine. Um, Femininity comes from within here, and true transition starts within here. So um, just remember that. That's old advice from an old girl and stuff. So um, let's see what we're going to start with. We're going to start with our foundation. And you want to look at your face like it is a canvas and where the light hits you. So you're going to be lighter through here, through here, and through here. That's with your highlight. Um, but we're going to simplify this even more for you. So you're going to find a foundation that matches you. Okay. Um, I'm going with, um, this particular, um, foundation. Um, it is one I'm going to be carrying in my store. It is a liquid, but it even covers up tattoos and everything. And it's very simple. They do make it in a stick form. Um, but it's very simple. Um, when you have, um, when you have very dry skin, um, a kind of that wet look that they're doing nowadays, um, anyone can do it in pictures and on film, but in person, when you have very dry skin that, um, where they're doing the highlight with the glimmer and all of that kind of stuff, um, it looks better on you. If you have ruddy skin, large pores, and by the way, let me explain what a pore is. A pore you really can't see, but they advertise it. Um, things like pore refining and all of that. What that actually is, what you see is hair follicles that is hereditary. So, and, um, you know, you want to cover up leftover acne scarring the best it can. Um, so, um, 
you know, you can get by with a little more sheen on your face. However, as a rule, when you're over a certain age, too much sheen um, can settle down into the wrinkles and lines and all of that and age you. Um, when you have skin more like mine, um, you do want more of a matte look. Um, so I, I go from being... Um, a little bit dry to oily. Um, so, and I go nine and 10 hours most days um, with the same makeup on because I work in my salon and I don't have time to touch up or anything. And I'm one of those girls, I love makeup. So we're gonna do um, some color and stuff tonight. With this makeup, you can just use th literally three drops to do everything. I didn't quite put three drops there, but, um, I'll go back if I need to and put a little more. Um, I know I babble a lot, but I want you to also know that this is all real. Nothing's un -ed nothing's edited here. Um, also, um, there's no filters. There's nothing like that. I know a lot of people out there do all the filters and do all of that. So you notice I'm going in up motion with everything. This is a mineral style makeup. Um, actually, a friend of mine out of Tennessee, this is um, his and his husband's um, makeup line. And I just got turned on to it. He sent me a whole box of everything and I gave it a try. And I was like, I, I'm really hard on makeup. And I fell in love with this stuff. So um, what I've noticed is it's really helped my skin. Um, there's a few times a year I really break out bad, but most of the time I'm not. So this, um, and especially their skincare line, has really helped me. So I'm just putting, I'm putting a few drops, I put a few drops on here. And then what I did is I just do in a circular motion all up. And as I said, this is the easiest way. Your foundation is the most important. You really want to have pretty or decent skin because it does make your makeup prettier. Um, this has a primer already kind of in it. Primers, some people are like, oh, I love them. They're everything. Uh, let me explain about primers. Primers are kind of another way to sell even more makeup because in the beauty business, in the makeup world, they want to sell, 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 sell. And um, so they do all these little things. Um, you want your makeup to do what it says it's going to do. Is it going to cover? Is it going to last? Is it going to do this? Is it going to do that? Whatever your needs for your makeup, you want that foundation to do that. And um, you can use any kind of makeup, but you want to use a better makeup, and especially something with a little more natural ingredients, and that usually costs a little more, because it does all the work for you, and it makes it easier on you, especially in the blending process and all of that. So I'm just going back through. I'm, I just make sure everything's on. I'm getting right up close where you can see everything, no filters, um, and as you can, as you know, I don't have the greatest skin, especially for someone my age. You can. I want to go get a facelift one day, but it's not happening yet. So there's a few ways to do your makeup. You can do it with two foundations but and do a little bit lighter through here. But I'm doing it with one foundation. Uh, I'm going to bring a little bit down, just a little bit down on my neck, okay? So um, anyway, I was talking about primers. I got, I sidetracked myself. Um, primers can make your makeup last longer. They can help make your hair follicles or what they're calling pores look smaller. Um, they can do a lot of things that they say, but you can get the same thing through good skincare, which is even better for you than using a primer. A setting spray, um, I think works a lot of times better than a primer. Um, if your skin is that, that bad, um, like extremely pity and all of that, um, you want to change your diet. You want to drink a lot of water, but you also, um, you might go to a dermatologist or come to someone like me and do some microdermabrasions. Um, you know, my skin's not where I want it to be. It never has been, um, but it's not like the worst out there. And I'm trying to age gracefully, although I still feel like I'm only 20 something years old. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we're going to powder now. And this is a powder I'm going to be selling. This is called a blur. This is a true translucent powder. It's white. So I'm going to dip just a little bit into my lid. 
just a little bit at a time. And, oh, and what I didn't tell you when we started, make sure you wash your hands if you're not going to use some kind of gloves. Um, when I do makeup um, in my salon, I do a lot of airbrushing or I'll use this, but I always have like vinyl gloves on because um, most people aren't allergic to vinyl, but they make all kinds of gloves out there. And that's because you want to touch your face and all that. And if you don't wear gloves, just make sure you wash your hands well. So I'm going to start in. I'm going to dot, 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 dot. And then I'm just going to kind of blend it. And you can do this with this powder. What the dry queens call beating the And I even bring it down on my neck. What they call beating the face is where they take a big old powder puff like this. And they dip it in and they boom, 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 boom. And I prefer using a brush because um, you put it on. You want it to set. And this is setting your foundation. Um, and then you go dust off the excess. And it just doesn't come across... Um, as heavy or anything. Now keep in mind, I'm I'm fairly light skin. Um, trying to get my lighting a little better here, but I'm fairly light skin, and um, it's um this has a little bit of a glow. I don't like. I have like some yellow lighting that's actually coming down, and I don't like that. Um, but your lighting's everything. <laughs> um, but as we get older, it just seems like because of lines and stuff we have. Um. It just seems like um, makeup as a rule, just in person, in real life, um, just sometimes can look a little heavy even when it's not. Um, but this foundation does what I want it to do. And as I said, this is not filtered. You probably even see my little nose hairs right there. You can definitely see the lines through here. I did not put that thick through there. I'm going to go in now. And I'm going to highlight. Highlighting is extremely important because what that does, we lose light at the age of 30 um, in our skin. And um, you can put that back in artificially. They do this on 16-year-old models. They do this on 20-something-year-old females all the time. They do it. And... Um, it just gives uh, it gives you a little bit more of a glow. It softens things up a little. Also, when you do your powder and your foundation, anywhere, like if you have have to shave your chest or your, your neck or whatever, anywhere, you know, you can blend it all the way down and it helps give you a little more of an even skin tone and all of that. Okay, so the powder I'm going to use, this has a little bit of a tint to it. And once again, my friend... They physically make their makeup in, um, in their, they have a perfume and makeup store and they sell it a bunch of places to like little places like what I have. I'm going to take a little brush like this. You can see this, a blending brush. And I'm going to go underneath, you see my sinus line there. I'm going to go underneath my sinus line and I'm blending that all the way up. I'm going to dip in a little more. Now, Things look way different on film than they do in person. And um, makeup can do a lot for you. I get so sick of all the filters because then you don't know what's real or what's not real. I don't filter or do any of that to any of my pictures. I had a friend that photoshopped one of my pictures and um, it looked great. It looked so weird. And I got so sick of people going, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful. So where they would say, oh, you look really, your picture looks really beautiful. But then the Photoshop stuff that my friend Megan did, they were like complimenting me. And it's like, it was clear that that's not me that's so Photoshopped up. So I'm just not a fan. I mean, what Photoshop was invented for was to um, take out like a hair or whatever that got in the way. So I'm going to go down my nose. I'm going to explain all of that here in a minute. And you can see a little bit of that highlight. And as I said, I'm putting a, and this is super, super light, um, not a heavy powder at all. And what you would do is just use a little bit lighter powder to help highlight And also, girls, I know um, some of you out there, this is going across a wide range of girls that are, that's doing all of this. But um, 
do something with your eyebrows. I also perform and have a lounge show here in Las Vegas. So I keep my eyebrows over the years. I've waxed them down. There's just like hardly anything there. And they're gray too on top of it. And being quarantined, all of my hair is starting to turn gray here. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm really being that tranny granny. Um, but anyway, um, shape your eyebrows. Um, if you can't do that, then go somewhere and have them waxed, but only underneath and keep the thickness, tweeze out the really long ones. Okay. Don't let anyone wax or any of that above your eyebrow because it's going to push that down and make it look a little more Neanderthal looking. And, um, then taping, um, I'm going to explain that. I'm not going to show it. Taping, you can use a surgical tape. Get it at Walmart. It's a, um, a, a stretchable, like the Next Care flexible tape. And you put, you can take it, split it in two, and put one here and bring up your eyebrow, bring up your eyebrow, and you're going to crisscross them and then do a piece over. And that secures it. Um, and then you're just going to put your makeup and stuff over that. Now, there's a, another way to do all of that, too. Um, you know, it, they both have their pros and cons. The other way is take a Elmer's glue purple stick. You're going to glue it down and you want your eyebrows to be flat. Um, you do not want to um, go in with scissors and do your eyebrows at all. Anyway, you want to tweeze out the long ones. If you do that with the scissors, you're not going to be able to get them to lay flat like you want. And they're going to pop up through the makeup over like a 10, 15, 20 minute time period. And then it's going to look strange. This becomes very thick. So you're going to do the purple glue stick over it. Let it dry clear. And you what the whole point is to lay down the eyebrow. Then you're going to go powder over it. Then you're going to foundation. Then you're going to powder. And try to use the same powder down here, not your highlighting powder, because um, it will make it look a little too light. And that gives you more eye space to work with, so you can use like part of your eyebrow or above your eyebrow. And that's the way the drag queens do it. But you're going to have to use a lot more shadow on your eye if you do this. If you tape up, you can use your own natural bone structure if you just get in and give a good shape. Also, if you have too thick of an eyebrow, and no thick eyebrows are in right now, it can still make you look mannish when we're tea girls, dressers, whatever you want to call us. Um, it it's not attractive. You want you don't want those thick, thick, thick eyebrows like the you the younger wearing. It can also age you. Um, so, you know, get your eyebrows waxed. Okay, so I went in. I highlighted. I'm gonna go back. And I'm just dusting off everything. And I'm blending and doing that and taking a little bit of powder that was on that I used down here and blending in. You can also mix your powders like that. Take your highlight and your other powder and mix them. Okay. So contouring will make this very simple. Contouring is dark. Highlighting is light. So um, hopefully you have some deep set eyes or something a little like mine. So we're going to start off with um, a makeup palette. And as I said, I love color. This is just a basic makeup palette. I sell them in my store. It has like all the browns and all of that in it. So if you learn how to paint in black and white, which we're kind of doing with the color being on our lips, maybe a little bit on our cheeks, um, you know, you then can transfer that over to color. Um, so what looks good with brown eyes? Um, if you like color, um, brown eyes, um, blues look great with brown eyes, depending on the level. I have a lot of green in my brown eye, but it doesn't show up here in video. Um, blues look good. Purples look good. Um, you can use like a purple to contour with the darken in in here and then a lighter color through here and a lighter color through there. So, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're just going to dip down in brown, okay? I'm going to start over here. Um, and I have small eyes, so I want to make them look bigger. So I'm going, you see, right on my my bone right in there. I'm going to start off over here, here, and I'm just going to bring it over a little. See what that's doing? I'm, I'm starting out light. And then I do, I like to pay do definition in my eyes. So you can take a sharp edge 
These are like lashes I'm going to wear later. And you can just do, line it up with this right in here and just do a light line. And that brings your eye up. Marilyn Monroe used to do that. Her makeup artist did it. And notice I'm not going all the way over. You can come all the way over, but my eyes are so deep set. Also around brown eyes, what looks really pretty are bronzes. And we're going to put a little bit of bronze in there. You can see that. Now, if you feel like anything gets too dark, you can always tone it down with powder. But just wait because your wigs and everything tone everything down too. So I went in. I did that. Now I'm going to contour my nose. And you can just do eyeliner and then put some lashes on and color today with this. But we're going to do a little more here. So you can use this to help make your nose straight and draw a line down. Um, and you want this. This is going to be lighter through here. If you come all the way down and even all the way here, it's going to make your nose look longer. If you do the brown all the way down and then underneath, that's going to make your nose look shorter. Um, the point is is to do like this, to think, because I have that bulb on the end of my nose, and it makes my nose look a lot bigger than it is in film. Um, so I like to make my nose a little straighter. Some people call it blocking, contouring. They do this on females all the time. Um, I hear some girls that go, oh, I don't need to block my nose anymore. I'm on hormones. Mm, hormones don't change you in that manner. Um, and don't run off to the plastic surgeon office and get these little teeny tiny nose. It doesn't, I like, I like real, you know, I like someone with real bone structure, not cartoon bone structure. If you want to cartoon it up, then paint it in. Don't um, permanently get it. Um, you want to be able to shop at Walmart. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to do this a little freehand. I'm going to go down. And then I'm going to pull this up into my, see, like that, right into my eyebrow. And some people, they're like, oh, I can see, like, the contour on your nose. You can always tone it down. But, yeah, you sometimes you can do that. But it's still the average person, you know, they're not going to be like this in your face where they see every little thing. Okay, um, so just chill, relax. This helps change you, and it's just 101 here. Um, if you don't want to see all that, then maybe you should go and look for a plastic surgeon. But they even contour anyone that you're going to see, like any celebrity, any of that. You go to any pro place because it can make you, your face look thinner, fuller, all of that. So I started out with that. I'm going to dip down into this bronzy color right here, because I love that bronzy color. And I'm going right over with that brown. I'm just mixing the two together. Do so you see how much darker that's starting to get? Now, I love black, but I'm not going to put black for my contour right now, because that does make it a little more draggy and um, a lot more like if you're going to go to a nightclub. Um... But I'll change it around after I get all done up. I'll go in and show you how you can darken everything up. So, so I did that. And I'm going to go back. Um, I'm out of my cream. So the highlight powder I use in here, I also would use on my eye. I'm going to use a different brush. Um, I'm going to use a brush like this. I can wipe that brush down and do it. But it's a lot easier if you... If you use brushes for dark colors, you don't want to use them for lighter colors either. And what I'm doing is this is just blending all of this. Also, with brown eyes, you can put like a light pink or a peachy color through here. It looks just absolutely beautiful. I'm also going to go down my nose. This was invented for Marlena Dietrich because um, she had a really big nose. So this is called a silver streak that um, they had invented for to make her nose look so small. And one person in Hollywood, he had a huge nose and they did everything with contour, um, Danny Kay. Um, and he was a dancer back in like in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And they figured out what actually made his nose look smaller because it was so big was that they dyed his hair red. 
So, um, and he still wore makeup when he was in, he was one heck of a dancer. So, looking at all that. Okay, so now we're going to go in and do eyebrows. So, your eyebrows should be lined up with your tear duct. Notice that's where mine is. So, you can put a dot here and then right above this, a dot, and then right at an angle with the outer corner of your eye. And you notice I did bring my outer corner of my contour out a little more. I do that on purpose because it helps make my eyes bigger when I go to put liner and stuff on. And then I do like this, even with that and a dot there. So I go dot, dot, dot. And then you can just go in and connect. Um, and I know some of you will have a lot more hair than I have, but another way also you can do that and then you go underneath your brow, do a straight line, and then on top of the brow, so you can see, and then down. And you're going to need to decide what type of shape you like, what type of shape of eyebrow you like. This is just very basic. You know, if you want it more rounded, whatever. Um... But I know that if you're not putting makeup on every day, you're taping your eyebrows up. Sorry, I just messed up there. Um, you know, you can do it like this and follow it and you'll get a nice shape in there. And as, I, as I said, I'm not 20 something years old. I'm a senior citizen. Um, I'm trans. And I love makeup and nothing's filtered here. So you can actually, you know, see, I haven't, I, I removed, I got a breast augmentation and have my beard removed and I've been off hormones a long time. So, um, you know, you decide what type of woman you want to be and the type of makeup you want. So this is a white pencil. I love this white pencil and I have small eyes. So I, I don't want to do it a stark, stark white. I want it just a little bit because it's going to help open my eyes up more. See that? And I'm going to pull down and out and do in. You can also do this before you put your foundation on. That's what I usually do, but I just forgot to do it. Also, you can also bring a line out like that. See? That also elongates the eye a little underneath. Okay, now we're going to go in with um, eyeshadow. Um, you can use a pencil. Um, you can, I'm not doing bottom lashes today because, um, I'm not going on stage. I'm trying to find my little angle brush to show you what that looks like. Um, also uh, the first thing I like to do though, I'm trying to find my brushes here. I'm sorry. I laid them all out. There's my angle brush. I like to go in with the brown, the flat brown that I did. And I like going right underneath my eye. And because my eyes are so small, I want to pay attention to detail with them. And this is just smoking the eye underneath. And I'm just, I'm using a brush like this. I'm getting up close so you can see it. See how wide 